Hello, I'm going to do a quick video follow-up to show the completion of the modules. Uh, it came from battery hookup and the overall setup and how everything's rigged up uh, at the moment. So there are four battery modules that are here, or battery packs effectively. There are 16 battery hookup uh, 20p uh, 3.2 uh, 100 amp hour modules combined in series here, each with their own BMS. Um, I went the direction of choosing to use the Anderson connections for everything to hook everything up. Granted, the wiring is still going to be managed a little bit right there, uh, but it's hooked up and running. Uh, you can see the Anderson connections over here, and then they're running back around. Uh, so this, just to walk through the whole setup, this is an LV5048 uh, inverter. Uh, it is powering most of the house. Uh, it is hooked up pulling power from the grid with a 50 amp or 50 amp sorry 40 amp breaker that is run through this conduit and into it and then the same channel the power out is then being run back through here to the off grid system that is right here so anything on this uh is off grid technically um if we lose power you don't notice it because we're not on grid um, so the batteries themselves, I can just easily open one up. These totes were perfect. Uh, the batteries themselves are just literally the modules here together using a lock washer and ring terminals with shrink wrap. Uh, they were assembled and put together. Uh, everything was done, all the connections were wrapped with Kapton tape as well as then friction tape to assure that, you know, shorting wasn't really a concern or an issue. Uh, the BMS isn't really affixed to anything, it's just kind of there. Um, I didn't feel like it needed to be fixed to anything. It's not, these aren't really mobile, they're not really going to go anywhere. Uh, the key thing for these to fit inside these totes, which you can get at Home Depot, was 2 inch insulation foam, which I put and cut and put in the base of, which raised the pack up a little bit, which then gave enough room, because obviously at the bottom, of it it's narrower but if you move up a little bit you get a little more space which then allowed for these modules to fit perfectly so out of this runs into the anderson connector um and again all the holes you can just drill very easily through these totes there's no problem i may eventually choose to seal the holes may not uh each of them have a bluetooth module which you can see there so then the power is hooked up here i know uh the one person who had commented and my one of my previous videos asked about this uh and wanted to know what this kind of looked like or had questions i feel like about this so each module has an individual 100 amp fuse um that are tied together for this uh they're the rated 100 amps is 1c but i don't really want that to go over that plus in theory the rating for this unit is only about 100 amps so we go over that, I want it to stop uh, immediately, which is what it would do. But at the same point, if one has an issue, I don't want to take down the system, which I think is critical. I have considered adding a main fuse to this, but I think that I'm kind of getting to the point to where it's a little bit overkill. Uh, if there's going to be an issue, it'll fail here, it'll fail in the machine. I, it's, it, they'll, the batteries will be protected, which is the main concern I have at the moment. So the one thing I did, uh, so all the positives run into here. Uh, I know that's black, that's black and it should be red, but I I didn't want to throw away the material, so I re reused it. I kept it. Um, it's in here. I used these little ties here to secure the wire because obviously it's just a tightened lug to hold these in place, and I felt like that was a little bit of stress. I didn't want to overstress the wire, to be honest. Then the negatives run up to this uh, this bus bar here over to a Victron shunt. Um, one of the things that I'm pretty proud of, actually, this whole setup is a lot of people don't build on their systems a solution to pre-charge the inverter. So when they turn it off, you get that arc or you need to use a, um, a resistor, right? So what I did in here is I actually wired up um, the resistor to the battery switch itself. So this switch has a one, a one plus two and a two. So the uh, turn on sequencing goes from off to one for a few seconds, which then charges the inverter and because it runs the power bypassing this through that uh, resistor and then one to two and then to two and then you turn on the inverter and you get no arc no spark uh, on top of that i have uh, icm icc solar uh, icm solar's uh, management software which is where i have the shunt which is then connected up here to the raspberry pi 
and um, it's hooked up both to the inverter as well as the shunt and this actually controls most of what the inverter does. It controls when it charges from grid, when it switches to and from grid, all the cuts offs and safeties, a lot of it's all tied to the Raspberry Pi. Um, so I guess the, the, really the last couple things that I intend on doing at the moment, uh, to be honest, is to tidy up the wires a bit, get them up off the ground, and I'm going to come up with some sort of um, riser or bracket riser. I'm going to cut a hole such that I can cover all the stuff that's here um, with a sheet of like plexine or plexiglass and no one just touches it. I don't really like that exposed. I don't know how big of a deal it really is, but there's nothing there to get hurt with really. Um, you would have to do something really dumb, but I do want to cover it all just to secure it, just to leave the switch exposed. Um, so I don't think anything else really matters. In fact, I probably just get away just covering it because everything else is insulated. Um, it's all two gauge wire, um, which has been fine. Um, it's just automotive jumper cable, actually. Um, this is two gauge, it's running into the inverter from the main breakers and then the um, wire that's running up here to the actual bus bars and everything is all four gauge jumper wire and I've had zero issues zero temperature I think push it well over 100 amps which I can't really do anyway to get it to get warm at all I'm not there if I needed to upgrade it I could swap it out very quickly you know you may be asking why the wires like this some of the wires will extend it because I reused wire from the Bolt battery system that was sent back due to recall to Battery Hookup, who graciously, you know, honored all of that and took it back, and that's been basically reused from that system. I didn't, again, want to throw away anything. I may, at some point, do something with this, but I don't think it matters at the moment. Uh, and that's pretty much how the whole system works. The Bluetooth modules work great. I can get access to it, and then the shunt I can directly connect to, or it connects into the Raspberry Pi. The ICM reads all the information and tells me everything, and now it can be managed based upon state of charge, not based on voltage, for the most part, except for emergency. So I got, like, multiple layers of safety. So the Raspberry Pi tells this thing to turn off and on based upon what I want it to do as well. It has cutoffs inside this for voltage termination and protections, and then the BMSs and the batteries, and then also that. So I have, like, almost three different levels of, four different levels of protection to make sure nothing bad happens in this situation. Um, but no, it's been great. Um, no real complaints so far. So good. There was a little bit of a curve to get these to kind of balance out once they were put in parallel together. But it basically I don't have any significant voltage differences between 10% and then 92%. Um, so 80% I have almost completely static. I think that's true. You do get some weirdness in the extremes with iron phosphate. I don't think you can do about it, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions, post them down below. Recommendations or thoughts, by all means, I'm all ears. So I appreciate your help and your thoughts, and thank you, and I'll see you in the future. Bye.